I think the biggest thing uh, I would love Saskatoon to know and our entire province is the social impact that this does have on our communities. Um, people are transitioning from being supported through government programs to earning a wage, paying taxes, like all this goes back into the community and it's a huge deal and uh, it changes family patterns. Like the success stories are unbelievable. So lots of these women, they start as laborers, they become apprentices and many of them are now journey person, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, all throughout Saskatchewan. So it is, um, it's not just a little thing that's happening, it ripples out into the entire community. I heard about this program through a friend on Facebook. I was on a, pro, a youth housing program back home, so a lot of people, a lot of my friends just tagged me in it, and then I just applied and I followed the steps, and here I am. I've always been mechanically minded. I can, I can do these, I can do the work. It's um, the, the program gives you the tickets to be able to walk on the job site, and that's a big deal. The best thing ever is uh, seeing someone's expression after they have actually built something and uh, recognizing, wow, I have those skills. They just need to be nurtured a little bit and uh, polished a little bit. I can tell you when a, a participant gets a job, I am through the roof, excited, happy, joyful because uh, it's a huge transition in their lives, it makes a huge impact uh, in their families and especially within the community. I really want to take this program and take it back home and show the younger women and women my age or even women older than me that we are much capable of doing just about anything. And when I was in that program, there was only two of us in that program, two women and then eight males and the other one, it was too much for her. So she liked doing it, but it got too much. So I wanted to show her and all the other ones that there's hope and you just have to really want it. And as far as where to take this after here, after this, gain the experience and, uh, you know, walk into a trade that, that you enjoy, you know, if you're gonna do this kind of thing. It's not just for a living. It's something that you can grow and, and potentially go further with. I mean, this is the start of, um, I guess, the interest into, hey, I can do this without, you know, without struggling. It's not difficult. I can, yeah, I can put things together. And if that's something that uh, comes easy uh, or or um, instead of struggling with with uh, uh, with something and you find this kind of, of work satisfying you know what look into it look into it it gets you into first and second year third year apprenticeship and onward so job sites throughout Saskatchewan um, have evolved throughout the years and it is really great to see but it's still maybe about 2% of the women are actually in trades, in uh, the male-dominated fields. So there's always room for improvement there. And when women take the YWCA trade journey course, they get these skills, they get the confidence, which is probably the biggest thing, because you grow up being told, okay, you shouldn't be doing that, you can't do that. You get so many labels on yourself. Here, you just start from scratch, and uh, when you have that confidence to walk up on a job site with your head held high, you can do anything, honestly, if you have the skill and the ambition. The stigma of women in trades, but when I was back in the program, they didn't really give me a shot because I was a female. I was really mainly just doing the sweeping and like the little works. I never actually got to do the framing and um, just any of the carpentry stuff, I just, they just put me aside. So I wanted to come into this program to prove that I am much capable of doing anything. I don't know about uh, 
the stigma of women in trades, but um, I suppose you could say the manual labor side of it is um, where a lot of uh, people think that women can't. And quite frankly, uh, instead of calling your plumber, instead of calling someone to fix something that took them 10 minutes, you can look at it and do it yourself. And it'll cost you less, as well as um, you feel that that sense of pride to, because you've got self-sufficiency, self-capability. Um, uh, things are a lot different. Uh, for example, I'm a journey person plumber. Uh, when I started out, it was much different than it is today. Uh, it's not s as much of a stigma. It's not uh, something crazy. That crazy girl is off doing wild things on the job site. <laughs> and it's just becoming the norm. And that's all we want. That's all we want to see. We don't want this to be a big deal. We want it to be normal. and. Uh, make sure that everybody has the opportunity. So when we are in the recruitment process, uh, we look for number one, people that show up uh, on time to all of the steps that we have for info session, meetings, interviews, anything like that. Secondly, the biggest one is we look for drive in a person, ambition, um, resilience, I don't care about anybody's past. What we care about is uh, what they can bring and how much they want it and goals that they have set. We love to hear about goals. <laughs> we had a really supporting group and from the first week we were all just like real close and like the first week we all even went out for lunch together. Some of us we carpooled and I thought the, the group itself was a really great group. So uh, I, I'm from up north so I had to move here and to have a great supporting group it was comforting. I think the biggest thing I would love to do or would be to encourage uh, women to explore the trades. It's not something uh, that people do when they can't get into college or university. This is a lifelong skill and it's something that no one can ever take away from you.